Uganda Uga H N D, officially the Republic of Uganda Swahili, Jamhuri ya Uganda, is a landlocked country except for its borders with Lake Victoria and Lake Albert in East Central Africa. It is bordered to the east by Kenya, to the north by South Sudan, to the west by the Democratic Republic of the Congo, to the southwest by Rwanda, and to the south by Tanzania. The southern part of the country includes a substantial portion of Lake Victoria, shared with Kenya and Tanzania. Uganda is in the African Great Lakes region. Uganda also lies within the Nile Basin, and has a varied but generally a modified equatorial climate. Uganda takes its name from the Baganda Kingdom, which encompasses a large portion of the south of the country, including the capital Kampala. The people of Uganda were hunter-gatherers until 1700 to 2300 years ago, when Bantu-speaking populations migrated to the southern parts of the country. Beginning in 1894, the area was ruled as a protectorate by the UK, who established administrative law across the territory. Uganda gained independence from the UK on 9 October 1962. The period since then has been marked by intermittent conflicts, including a lengthy civil war against the Lord's Resistance Army in the northern region led by Joseph Kony, which has caused hundreds of thousands of casualties. The official languages are English and Swahili, although any other language may be used as a medium of instruction in schools or other educational institutions or for legislative, administrative or judicial purposes as may be prescribed by law." Luganda, a central language, is widely spoken across the country, and several other languages are also spoken including Runyoro, Runyankol, Rukiga, and Luo. The president of Uganda is Yoeri Kaguda Museveni, who came to power in January 1986 after a protracted six-year guerrilla war. History The ancestors of the Ugandans were hunter-gatherers until 1700 to 2300 years ago. Bantu-speaking populations, who were probably from Central Africa, migrated to the southern parts of the country. According to oral tradition, the Empire of Katara covered an important part of the Great Lakes area, from the northern lakes Albert and Kioga to the southern lakes Victoria and Tanganyika. Bunyoro Katara is claimed as the antecedent of the Baganda, Toro, Ankol, and Busoga kingdoms. Some Luo invaded the area of Bunyoro and assimilated with the Bantu there, establishing the Babito dynasty of the current Omakama ruler of Bunyoro Katara. Arab traders moved inland from the Indian Ocean coast of East Africa in the 1830s. They were followed in the 1860s by British explorers searching for the source of the Nile. British Anglican missionaries arrived in the Kingdom of Baganda in 1877 a situation which gave rise to the death of the Uganda martyrs and were followed by French Catholic missionaries in 1879. The British government chartered the Imperial British East Africa Company to negotiate trade agreements in the region beginning in 1888. From 1886, there were a series of religious wars in Baganda, initially between Muslims and Christians and then, from 1890, between Ba Inglesa Protestants and Ba Fransa Catholics. Because of civil unrest and financial burdens, IBEAC claimed that it was unable to maintain their occupation in the region. British commercial interests were ardent to protect the trade route of the Nile, which prompted the British government to annex Baganda and adjoining territories to create the Uganda Protectorate in 1894. <laughs> Uganda Protectorate 1894 In the 1890s, 32,000 labourers from British India were recruited to East Africa under indentured labour contracts to construct the Uganda Railway. Most of the surviving Indians returned home, but 6,724 decided to remain in East Africa after the line's completion. Subsequently, some became traders and took control of cotton ginning and sartorial retail. From 1900 to 1920, a sleeping sickness epidemic in the southern part of Uganda, along the north shores of Lake Victoria, killed more than 250,000 people. Topic: <inaudible> Independence, 1962 to 1965. Uganda gained independence from Britain on 9 October 1962 with Queen Elizabeth II as head of state and Queen of Uganda. 
In October 1963, Uganda became a republic but maintained its membership in the Commonwealth of Nations. The first post-independence election, held in 1962, was won by an alliance between the Uganda People's Congress and Kabaka Yeka UPC and KY formed the first post-independence government with Milton Oboe as executive prime minister, with the Baganda Kabaka King Edward Mutisa II holding the largely ceremonial position of president. The Baganda Crisis 1962–1966 Uganda's immediate post-independence years were dominated by the relationship between the central government and the largest regional kingdom, Baganda. From the moment the British created the Uganda Protectorate, the issue of how to manage the largest monarchy within the framework of a unitary state had always been a problem. Colonial governors had failed to come up with a formula that worked. This was further complicated by Baganda's nonchalant attitude to its relationship with the central government. Baganda never sought independence, but rather appeared to be comfortable with a loose arrangement that guaranteed them privileges above the other subjects within the protectorate or a special status when the British left. This was evidenced in part by hostilities between the British colonial authorities and Baganda prior to independence. Within Baganda, there were divisions between those who wanted the Kabaka to remain a dominant monarch, and those who wanted to join with the rest of Uganda to create a modern secular state. The split resulted in the creation of two dominant Baganda-based parties, the Kabaka Yeka Kabaka only KY, and the Democratic Party DP that had roots in the Catholic Church. The bitterness between these two parties was extremely intense especially as the first elections for the post-colonial parliament approached. The Kabaka particularly disliked the DP leader, Benedicto Kiwanuka, outside Baganda, a quiet spoken politician from northern Uganda, Milton Oboe, had forged an alliance of non Baganda politicians to form the Uganda People's Congress. UPC. The UPC at its heart was dominated by politicians who wanted to rectify what they saw as the regional inequality that favoured Baganda's special status. This drew in substantial support from outside Baganda. The party however remained a loose alliance of interests but Oboe showed great skill at negotiating them into a common ground based on a federal formula. At independence, the Baganda question remained unresolved. Uganda was one of the few colonial territories that achieved independence without a dominant political party with a clear majority in parliament. In the pre-independence elections, the UPC ran no candidates in Baganda and won 37 of the 61 directly elected seats outside Baganda. The DP won 24 seats outside Baganda. The special status granted to Baganda meant that the 21 Baganda seats were elected by proportional representation reflecting the elections to the Baganda parliament, the Lukaku. KY won a resounding victory over DP, winning all 21 seats. The UPC reached a high at the end of 1964 when the leader of the DP in parliament, Basil Bataringaya crossed the parliamentary floor with five other MPs, leaving DP with only nine seats. The DP MPs were not particularly happy that their leader Benedicto Kiwanuka's hostility towards the Kabaka that was hindering their chances of compromise with KY. The trickle of defections turned into a flood when 10 KY members crossed the floor when they realized the formal coalition with the UPC was no longer viable. Oboe's charismatic speeches across the country were sweeping all before him, and the UPC was winning almost every local election held and increasing its control over all district councils and legislatures outside Baganda. The response from the Kabaka was mute, probably content in his ceremonial role and symbolism in his part of the country. However, there were also major divisions within his palace that made it difficult for him to act effectively against Oboe. By the time Uganda had become independent, Baganda was a divided house with contending social and political forces. There were however problems brewing inside the UPC. As its ranks swelled, the ethnic, religious, regional and personal interests began to shake the party. The party's apparent strength was eroded in a complex sequence of factional conflicts in its central and regional structures. And by 1966, the UPC was tearing itself apart. The conflicts were further intensified by the newcomers who had crossed the parliamentary floor from DP and KY. The UPC delegates arrived in Gulu in 1964 for their delegates' conference. Here was the first demonstration as to how Oboe was losing control of his party. 
The battle over the Secretary General of the party was a bitter contest between the new moderates candidate, Grace Ibingara and the radical John Kakanj. Ibingara subsequently became the symbol of the opposition to Oboe within the UPC. This is an important factor when looking at the subsequent events that led to the crisis between Baganda and the central government. For those outside the UPC, including KY supporters, this was a sign that Oboe was vulnerable. Keen observers realized the UPC was not a cohesive unit. The collapse of the UPC KY alliance openly revealed the dissatisfaction Oboe and others had about Baganda's special status. In 1964 the government responded to demands from some parts of the vast Baganda kingdom that they were not the Kabaka's subjects. Prior to colonial rule Baganda had been rivaled by the neighbouring Bunyoro kingdom. Baganda had conquered parts of Bunyoro and the British colonialists had formalised this in the Baganda agreements. Known as the ''Lost Counties'', the people in these areas wished to revert to being part of Bunyoro. Oboe decided to allow a referendum, which angered the Kabaka and most of the rest of Baganda. The residents of the counties voted to return to Bunyoro despite the Kabaka's attempts to influence the vote. Having lost the referendum, KY opposed the bill to pass the counties to Bunyoro, thus ending the alliance with the UPC. The tribal nature of Ugandan politics was also manifesting itself in government. The UPC which had previously been a national party began to break along tribal lines when Ibingara challenged Oboe in the UPC. The North-South ethnic divide that had been evident in economic and social spheres now entrenched itself in politics. Oboe surrounded himself with mainly northern politicians, A. A. Nakon, Felix Onama, Alex O'Hara, while Ibangira's supporters who were subsequently arrested and jailed with him, were mainly from the south, George Majezi, B. Kiria, Matthias and Gobi. In time, the two factions acquired ethnic labels, Bantu, the mainly southern Ibangira faction, and Nilotic, the mainly northern Oboe faction. The perception that the government was at war with the Bantu was further enhanced when Oboe arrested and imprisoned the mainly Bantu ministers who backed Ibingara. These labels brought into the mix two very powerful influences. First Baganda, the people of Baganda are Bantu and therefore naturally aligned to the Ibingara faction. The Ibingara faction further advanced this alliance by accusing Oboe of wanting to overthrow the Kabaka. They were now aligned to opposing Oboe. Second, the security forces, the British colonialists had recruited the army and police almost exclusively from northern Uganda due to their perceived suitability for these roles. At independence, the army and police was dominated by northern tribes, mainly Nilotic. They would now feel more affiliated to Oboe, and he took full advantage of this to consolidate his power. In April 1966, Oboe passed out 800 new army recruits at Moroto, of whom 70% came from the northern region. It is true that at the time there was a tendency to see central government and security forces as dominated by northerners, particularly the Acholi, who through the UPC had significant access to government positions at national level. In northern Uganda, there were also varied degrees of anti Baganda feelings, particularly over the kingdom's special status before and after independence, and all the economic and social benefits that came with this status. Oboe brought significant numbers of northerners into the central state, both through the civil service and military, and created a patronage machine in northern Uganda. However, both Bantu and Nilotic labels represent significant ambiguities. The Bantu category for example includes both Baganda and Bunyoro, historically bitter rivals. The Nilotic label includes the Lugbara, Acholi and Langi who have bitter rivalries that were to define Uganda's military politics later. Despite these ambiguities, these events unwittingly brought to fore the northerner-southerner political divide which to some extent still influences Ugandan politics. The UPC fragmentation continued as opponents sensed Oboe's vulnerability. At local level where the UPC dominated most councils discontent began to challenge incumbent council leaders. Even in Oboe's home district, attempts were made to oust the head of the local district council in 1966. A more worrying fact for the UPC was that the next national elections loomed in 1967 and without the support of KY, who were now likely to back the DP, and the growing factionalism in the UPC, there was the real possibility that the UPC would be out of power in months. Oboe went after KY with a new Act of Parliament in early 1966 that blocked any attempt by KY to expand outside Baganda. 
KY appeared to respond in Parliament through one of their few remaining MPs, the terminally ill Dowdy Akyang. Akyang was an irony, although from northern Uganda, he had risen high in the ranks of KY and become a close confidant to the Kabaka who had gifted him with large land titles in Baganda. In Obo's absence from Parliament, Akyang laid bare the illegal plundering of ivory and gold from the Congo that had been orchestrated by Obo's army chief of staff, Colonel Idi Amin. He further alleged that Obo, Onama and Nakon had all benefited from the scheme. Parliament overwhelmingly voted in favor of a motion to censure Amin and investigate Obo's involvement. This shook the government and raised tensions in the country. KY further demonstrated its ability to challenge Obo from within his party at the UPC Baganda conference where Godfrey Benaisa the Attorney General was ousted by a faction believed to have the backing of KY, Ibingara and other anti-Obo elements in Baganda. Obo's response was to arrest Ibingara and other ministers at a cabinet meeting and to assume special powers in February 1966. In March 1966, Obo also announced that the offices of president and vice president would cease to exist, effectively dismissing the Kabaka. Obo also gave Amin more power, giving him the army commander position over the previous holder Opolot, who had relations to Baganda through marriage possibly believing Opolot would be reluctant to take military action against the Kabaka if it came to that. Obo abolished the constitution and effectively suspended elections due in a few months. Obo went on television and radio to accuse the Kabaka of various offences including requesting foreign troops which appears to have been explored by the Kabaka following the rumours of Amin plotting a coup. Obo further dismantled the authority of the Kabaka by announcing among other measures the abolition of independent public service commissions for federal units. This removed the Kabaka's authority to appoint civil servants in Baganda. The abolition of the Baganda High Court, removing any judicial authority the Kabaka had. The bringing of Baganda financial management under further central control. Abolition of lands for Baganda chiefs. Land is one of the key sources of Kabaka's power over his subjects. The lines were now drawn for a showdown between Baganda and the central government. Historians may argue about whether this could have been avoided through compromise. This was unlikely as Obo now felt emboldened and saw the Kabaka as weak. Indeed, by accepting the presidency four years earlier and siding with the UPC, the Kabaka had divided his people and taken the side of one against the other. Within Baganda's political institutions, rivalries driven by religion and personal ambition made the institutions ineffective and unable to respond to the central government moves. The Kabaka was often regarded as aloof and unresponsive to advice from the younger Baganda politicians who better understood the new post-independence politics, unlike the traditionalists who were ambivalent to what was going on as long as their traditional benefits were maintained. The Kabaka favored the neo-traditionalists. In May 1966, the Kabaka made his move. He asked for foreign help and the Baganda parliament demanded that the Uganda government leave Baganda, including the capital, Kampala. In response Obo ordered Idi Amin to attack the Kabaka's palace. The battle for the Kabaka's palace was fierce, the Kabaka's guards putting up more resistance than had been expected. The British-trained captain, the Kabaka with about 120 armed men kept Idi Amin at bay for 12 hours. It is estimated that up to 2,000 people died in the battle which ended when the army called in heavier guns and overran the palace. The anticipated countryside uprising in Baganda did not materialize and a few hours later a beaming obo met the press to relish his victory. The Kabaka escaped over the palace walls and was scuttled off into exile in London by supporters. He died there three years later. Topic: 1966-1971 before the coup. In 1966, following a power struggle between the Obo-led government and King Mutisa, Obo suspended the constitution and removed the ceremonial president and vice president. In 1967, a new constitution proclaimed Uganda a republic and abolished the traditional kingdoms. Obo was declared the president. Topic. 1971 after the coup minus 1979 end of Amin regime After a military coup on the 25th of January 1971 Obo was deposed from power and General Idi Amin seized control of the country 
Amin ruled Uganda as dictator with the support of the military for the next eight years. He carried out mass killings within the country to maintain his rule. An estimated 80,000 to 500,000 Ugandans lost their lives during his regime. Aside from his brutalities, he forcibly removed the entrepreneurial Indian minority from Uganda. In June 1976, Palestinian terrorists hijacked an Air France flight and forced it to land at Entebbe Airport. 100 of the 250 passengers originally on board were held hostage until an Israeli commando raid rescued them ten days later. Amman's reign was ended after the Uganda-Tanzania War in 1979, in which Tanzanian forces aided by Ugandan exiles invaded Uganda. Topic: 1986 present. Yoweri Museveni has been president since his forces toppled the previous regime in January 1986. Political parties in Uganda were restricted in their activities beginning that year, in a measure ostensibly designed to reduce sectarian violence. In the non-party movement system instituted by Museveni, political parties continued to exist, but they could operate only a headquarters office. They could not open branches, hold rallies, or field candidates directly although electoral candidates could belong to political parties. A constitutional referendum cancelled this 19-year ban on multi-party politics in July 2005. In the mid to late 1990s, Museveni was lauded by Western countries as part of a new generation of African leaders. His presidency has been marred, however, by invading and occupying the Democratic Republic of the Congo during the Second Congo War, resulting in an estimated 5.4 million deaths since 1998, and by participating in other conflicts in the Great Lakes region of Africa. He has struggled for years in the civil war against the Lord's Resistance Army, which has been guilty of numerous crimes against humanity, including child slavery, the Atiak massacre, and other mass murders. Conflict in northern Uganda has killed thousands and displaced millions. Parliament abolished presidential term limits in 2005, allegedly because Museveni used public funds to pay $2,000 to each member of parliament who supported the measure. Presidential elections were held in February 2006. Museveni ran against several candidates, the most prominent of them being Kizabisai. On 20 February 2011, the Uganda Electoral Commission declared the incumbent president Yoweri Kaguta Museveni the winning candidate of the 2011 elections that were held on 18 February 2011. The opposition however, were not satisfied with the results, condemning them as full of sham and rigging. According to the official results, Museveni won with 68% of the votes. This easily topped his nearest challenger, Bisai, who had been Museveni's physician and told reporters that he and his supporters downrightly snub the outcome as well as the unremitting rule of Museveni or any person he may appoint. Bisai added that the rigged elections would definitely lead to an illegitimate leadership and that it is up to Ugandans to critically analyze this. The European Union's election observation mission reported on improvements and flaws of the Ugandan electoral process. The electoral campaign and polling day were conducted in a peaceful manner. However, the electoral process was marred by avoidable administrative and logistical failures that led to an unacceptable number of Ugandan citizens being disfranchised. Since August 2012, hacktivist group Anonymous has threatened Ugandan officials and hacked official government websites over its anti-gay bills. Some international donors have threatened to cut financial aid to the country if anti-gay bills continue. Indicators of a plan for succession by the president's son, Muhuzi Kainerugaba, have increased tensions. Topic: <laughs> Geography. <laughs> The country is located on the East African Plateau, lying mostly between latitudes 4 degrees north and 2 degrees south a small area is north of 4 degrees, and longitudes 29 degrees and 35 degrees east. It averages about 1,100 meters 3,609 feet above sea level, sloping very steadily downwards to the Sudanese plain to the north. Some international trade organizations categorize Kenya as part of the Greater Horn of Africa. Lakes and rivers 
Much of the south of the country is heavily influenced by one of the world's biggest lakes, Lake Victoria, which contains many islands. Most important cities are located in the south, near this lake, including the capital Kampala and the nearby city of Entebbe. Lake Kioga is in the center of the country and is surrounded by extensive marshy areas. Although landlocked, Uganda contains many large lakes. Besides Lakes Victoria and Kioga, there are Lake Albert, Lake Edward, and the smaller Lake George. Uganda lies almost completely within the Nile Basin. The Victoria Nile drains from Lake Victoria into Lake Kioga and thence into Lake Albert on the Congolese border. It then runs northwards into South Sudan. An area in eastern Uganda is drained by the Swam River, part of the internal drainage basin of Lake Turkana. The extreme northeastern part of Uganda drains into the Lodakipi Basin, which is primarily in Kenya. <inaudible> environment and conservation Uganda has 60 protected areas, including 10 national parks, Biwindi Impenetrable National Park and Ruanzori Mountains National Park both UNESCO World Heritage Sites, Kabale National Park, Kitipo Valley National Park, Lake M. Burrow National Park, MGA Hinga Gorilla National Park, Mount Elgin National Park, Murchison Falls National Park, Queen Elizabeth National Park, and Semaliki National Park. Government and politics The President of Uganda is both head of state and head of government. The President appoints a vice president and a prime minister to aid him in governing. The parliament is formed by the National Assembly, which has 449 members. These include, 290 constituency representatives, 116 district woman representatives, 10 representatives of the Uganda People's Defense Forces, 5 representatives of the youth, 5 representatives of workers, 5 representatives of persons with disabilities and 18 ex-official members. Corruption Transparency International has rated Uganda's public sector as one of the most corrupt in the world. In 2016, Uganda ranked 151st worst out of 176 and had a score of 25 on a scale from 0 perceived as most corrupt to 100 perceived as clean. The World Bank's 2015 Worldwide Governance Indicators ranked Uganda in the worst 12th percentile of all countries. According to the United States Department of State's 2012 Human Rights Report on Uganda, the World Bank's most recent worldwide governance indicators reflected corruption was a severe problem, and that, the country annually loses 768.9 billion shillings million to corruption. Ugandan parliamentarians in 2014 earned 60 times what was earned by most state employees, and they sought a major increase. This caused widespread criticism and protests, including the smuggling of two piglets into the parliament in June 2014 to highlight corruption amongst members of parliament. The protesters, who were arrested, used the word, M. Pigs, to highlight their grievance, a specific scandal, which had significant international consequences and highlighted the presence of corruption in high level government offices, was the embezzlement of $12.6 million of donor funds from the office of the Prime Minister in 2012. These funds were earmarked as crucial support for rebuilding northern Uganda, ravaged by a 20-year war, and Karamoya, Uganda's poorest region. This scandal prompted the EU, the UK, Germany, Denmark, Ireland, and Norway to suspend aid. Widespread grand and petty corruption involving public officials and political patronage systems have also seriously affected the investment climate in Uganda. One of the high corruption risk areas is the public procurement in which non-transparent under the table cash payments are often demanded from procurement officers. What may ultimately compound this problem is the availability of oil. The petroleum bill passed by parliament in 2012 and touted by the NRM as bringing transparency to the oil sector has failed to please domestic and international political commentators and economists. For instance, Angelo Azama, a Ugandan energy analyst at the U.S.-based Open Society Foundation said the new law was tantamount to "...handing over an ATM cash machine," to Museveni and his regime. According to Global Witness in 2012, a non-governmental organization devoted to international law, Uganda now has 
Oil reserves that have the potential to double the government's revenue within 6 to 10 years, worth an estimated US$2.4 billion per year." The Non-Governmental Organizations Amendment Act, passed in 2006, has stifled the productivity of NGOs through erecting barriers to entry, activity, funding and assembly within the sector. Burdensome and corrupt registration procedures i.e. requiring recommendations from government officials, annual re-registration, unreasonable regulation of operations i.e. requiring government notification prior to making contact with individuals in NGOs' area of interest, and the precondition that all foreign funds be passed through the Bank of Uganda, among other things, are severely limiting the output of the NGO sector. Furthermore, the sector's freedom of speech has been continually infringed upon through the use of intimidation, and the recent Public Order Management Bill severely limiting freedom of assembly will only add to the government's stockpile of ammunition. <laughs> <laughs> Administrative divisions As of 2018, Uganda is divided into 121 districts. Rural areas of districts are subdivided into sub-counties, parishes, and villages. Municipal and town councils are designated in urban areas of districts. Political subdivisions in Uganda are officially served and united by the Uganda Local Governments Association (ULGA), a voluntary and non-profit body which also serves as a forum for support and guidance for Ugandan sub-national governments. Parallel with the state administration, five traditional Bantu kingdoms have remained, enjoying some degrees of mainly cultural autonomy. The kingdoms are Toro, Busoga, Bunyoro, Baganda, and Arwenzoruru. Furthermore, some groups attempt to restore Ankol as one of the officially recognized traditional kingdoms, to no avail yet. Several other kingdoms and chiefdoms are officially recognized by the government, including the Union of Alor Chiefdoms, the Iteso Paramount Chieftaincy, the Paramount Chieftaincy of Longo and the Padhola State. Foreign relations and military In Uganda, the Uganda People's Defense Force serves as the military. The number of military personnel in Uganda is estimated at 45,000 soldiers on active duty. The Uganda Army is involved in several peacekeeping and combat missions in the region, with commentators noting that only the United States Armed Forces is deployed in more countries. Uganda has soldiers deployed in the northern and eastern areas of the Democratic Republic of the Congo and in the Central African Republic, Somalia, and South Sudan. <laughs> <laughs> International organization memberships Organization of Islamic Cooperation <laughs> <laughs> Human rights There are many areas which continue to attract concern when it comes to human rights in Uganda. Conflict in the northern parts of the country continues to generate reports of abuses by both the Rebel Lords Resistance Army LRA, led by Joseph Kony, and the Ugandan Army. A UN official accused the LRA in February 2009 of "...appalling brutality." In the Democratic Republic of Congo, the number of internally displaced persons is estimated at 1.4 million. Torture continues to be a widespread practice amongst security organizations. Attacks on political freedom in the country, including the arrest and beating of opposition members of parliament, have led to international criticism, culminating in May 2005 in a decision by the British government to withhold part of its aid to the country. The arrest of the main opposition leader Kiza Bisai and the siege of the High Court during a hearing of Bisai's case by heavily armed security forces, before the February 2006 elections, led to condemnation. Child labor is common in Uganda. Many child workers are active in agriculture. Children who work on tobacco farms in Uganda are exposed to health hazards. Child domestic servants in Uganda risk sexual abuse. Trafficking of children occurs. Slavery and forced labor are prohibited by the Ugandan constitution. The U.S. Committee for Refugees and Immigrants reported several violations of refugee rights in 2007, including forcible deportations by the Ugandan government and violence directed against refugees. Torture and extrajudicial killings have been a pervasive problem in Uganda in recent years. For instance, according to a 2012 U.S. State Department report, 
The African Center for Treatment and Rehabilitation for Torture Victims registered 170 allegations of torture against police, 214 against the UPDF, 1 against military police, 23 against the Special Investigations Unit, 361 against unspecified security personnel, and 24 against prison officials. Between January and September 2012, in September 2009 Museveni refused Kabaka Mwenda Mutebi, the Baganda king, permission to visit some areas of Baganda kingdom, particularly the Kayunga district. Riots occurred and over 40 people were killed while others remain imprisoned to this date. Furthermore, nine more people were killed during the April 2011, Walk to Work, demonstrations. According to the Human Rights Watch 2013 World Report on Uganda, the government has failed to investigate the killings associated with both of these events. <laughs> <laughs> LGBT rights In 2007, a Ugandan newspaper, The Red Pepper, published a list of allegedly gay men, many of whom suffered harassment as a result. On the 9th of October 2010, the Ugandan newspaper Rolling Stone published a front-page article titled "100 Pictures of Uganda's Top Homos Leak." That listed the names, addresses, and photographs of 100 homosexuals alongside a yellow banner that read, "Hang them." The paper also alleged that homosexuals aimed to recruit Ugandan children. This publication attracted international attention and criticism from human rights organizations, such as Amnesty International, No Peace Without Justice and the International Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Trans and Intersex Association. According to gay rights activists, many Ugandans have been attacked since the publication. On 27 January 2011, gay rights activist David Cato was murdered. In 2009, the Ugandan parliament considered an anti homosexuality bill that would have broadened the criminalization of homosexuality by introducing the death penalty for people who have previous convictions, or are HIV positive, and engage in same sex sexual acts. The bill also included provisions for Ugandans who engage in same-sex sexual relations outside of Uganda, asserting that they may be extradited back to Uganda for punishment, and included penalties for individuals, companies, media organizations, or non-governmental organizations that support legal protection for homosexuality or sodomy. The private member's bill was submitted by MP David Bahati in Uganda on 14 October 2009, and was believed to have had widespread support in the Uganda parliament. The hacktivist group Anonymous hacked into Ugandan government websites in protest of the bill. The debate of the bill was delayed in response to global condemnation but was eventually passed on 20 December 2013 and signed by President Yoweri Museveni on 24 February 2014. The death penalty was dropped in the final legislation. The law was widely condemned by the international community. Denmark, the Netherlands, and Sweden said they would withhold aid. The World Bank on 28 February 2014 said it would postpone a $90 million loan, while the United States said it was reviewing ties with Uganda. On 1 August 2014, the Constitutional Court of Uganda ruled the bill invalid as it was not passed with the required quorum. A 13 August 2014 news report said that the Ugandan Attorney General had dropped all plans to appeal, per a directive from President Museveni who was concerned about foreign reaction to the bill and who also said that any newly introduced bill should not criminalize same-sex relationships between consenting adults. Topic economy and infrastructure The Bank of Uganda is the central bank of Uganda and handles monetary policy along with the printing of the Ugandan shilling. In 2015, Uganda's economy generated export income from the following merchandise coffee, US $402.63 million, oil re exports, US $131.25 million, base metals and products, US $120 million, fish, US $117.56 million. Maize, US $90.97 million, cement, US $80.13 million, tobacco, US $73.13 million, tea, US $69.94 million, sugar, US $66.43 million, hides and skins, US $62.71 million, cocoa beans, US $55.67 million, beans, US $53.88 million, simsim, US $52.2 
$1.20 million, flowers US $51.44 million, and other products US $766.77 million. The country has been experiencing consistent economic growth. In fiscal year 2015-16, Uganda recorded gross domestic product growth of 4.6% in real terms and 11.6% in nominal terms. This compares to 5.0% real growth in fiscal year 2014-15. The country has largely untapped reserves of both crude oil and natural gas. While agriculture accounted for 56% of the economy in 1986, with coffee as its main export, it has now been surpassed by the services sector, which accounted for 52% of GDP in 2007. In the 1950s, the British colonial regime encouraged some 500,000 subsistence farmers to join cooperatives. Since 1986, the government with the support of foreign countries and international agencies has acted to rehabilitate an economy devastated during the regime of Idi Amin and the subsequent civil war. In 2012, the World Bank still listed Uganda on the heavily indebted poor countries list. Economic growth has not always led to poverty reduction. Despite an average annual growth of 2.5% between 2000 and 2003, poverty levels increased by 3.8% during that time. This has highlighted the importance of avoiding jobless growth and is part of the rising awareness in development circles of the need for equitable growth not just in Uganda, but across the developing world. With the Uganda Securities Exchanges established in 1996, several equities have been listed. The government has used the stock market as an avenue for privatization. All government treasury issues are listed on the Securities Exchange. The Capital Markets Authority has licensed 18 brokers, asset managers, and investment advisors including, African Alliance Investment Bank, Baroda Capital Markets Uganda Limited, Crane Financial Services Uganda Limited, Crested Stocks and Securities Limited, Dyer and Blair Investment Bank, Equity Stock Brokers Uganda Limited, Renaissance Capital Investment Bank and UAP Financial Services Limited. As one of the ways of increasing formal domestic savings, pension sector reform is the center of attention. 2007, Uganda traditionally depends on Kenya for access to the Indian Ocean port of Mombasa. Efforts have intensified to establish a second access route to the sea via the lakeside ports of Bukasa in Uganda and Musoma in Tanzania, connected by railway to Arusha in the Tanzanian interior and to the port of Tanga on the Indian Ocean. Uganda is a member of the East African Community and a potential member of the planned East African Federation. Uganda has a large diaspora, residing mainly in the United States and the United Kingdom. This diaspora has contributed enormously to Uganda's economic growth through remittances and other investments, especially property. According to the World Bank, Uganda received in 2016 an estimated US$1.099 billion in remittances from abroad, second only to Kenya US$1.574 billion in the East African community. Uganda also serves as an economic hub for a number of neighboring countries like the Democratic Republic of the Congo, South Sudan, and Rwanda. The Ugandan Bureau of Statistics announced inflation was 4.6% in November 2016. On June 29, 2018, Uganda's statistics agency said the country registered a drop in inflation to 3.4% in the financial year ending 2017 18 compared to the 5.7% recorded in the financial year 2016 17. Poverty Uganda is one of the poorest nations in the world. In 2012, 37.8% of the population lived on less than $1.25 a day. Despite making enormous progress in reducing the countrywide poverty incidence from 56% of the population in 1992 to 24.5% in 2009, poverty remains deep-rooted in the country's rural areas, which are home to 84% of Ugandans. People in rural areas of Uganda depend on farming as the main source of income and 90% of all rural women work in the agricultural sector. In addition to agricultural work, rural women are responsible for the caretaking of their families. The average Ugandan woman spends nine hours a day on domestic tasks, such as preparing food and clothing, fetching water and firewood, and caring for the elderly, the sick as well as orphans. 
As such, women on average work longer hours than men, between 12 and 18 hours per day, with a mean of 15 hours, as compared to men, who work between 8 and 10 hours a day. To supplement their income, rural women may engage in small scale entrepreneurial activities such as rearing and selling local breeds of animals. Nonetheless, because of their heavy workload, they have little time for these income generating activities. The poor cannot support their children at school and in most cases, girls drop out of school to help out in domestic work or to get married. Other girls engage in sex work. As a result, young women tend to have older and more sexually experienced partners and this puts women at a disproportionate risk of getting affected by HIV, accounting for about 57% of all adults living with HIV in Uganda. Maternal health in rural Uganda lags behind national policy targets and the Millennium Development Goals, with geographical inaccessibility, lack of transport and financial burdens identified as key demand side constraints to accessing maternal health services. As such, interventions like inter intermediate transport mechanisms have been adopted as a means to improve women's access to maternal health care services in rural regions of the country. Gender inequality is the main hindrance to reducing women's poverty. Women are subjected to an overall lower social status than men. For many women, this reduces their power to act independently, participate in community life, become educated and escape reliance upon abusive men. Communications There are seven telecommunications companies serving over 21 million subscribers in a population of over 34 million. More than 95% of Internet connections are made using mobile phones. The total mobile and fixed telephony subscriptions increased from over 20 million to over 21 million, yielding an increment of over 1.1 million subscribers, 5.4 increase compared to the 4.1% increases realized in the previous quarter Q4 2014, October to December. Topic: Energy In the 1980s, the majority of energy in Uganda came from charcoal and wood. However, oil was found in the Lake Albert area, totaling an estimated 95 million cubic meters, 3.35489333 times 109 cu feet barrels of crude. Heritage Oil discovered one of the largest crude oil finds in Uganda and continues operations there. Water supply and sanitation According to a 2006 published report, the Ugandan water supply and sanitation sector had made substantial progress in urban areas since the mid-1990s, with substantial increases in coverage as well as in operational and commercial performance. Sector reforms in the period 1998-2003 included the commercialization and modernization of the National Water and Sewerage Corporation operating in cities and larger towns, as well as decentralization and private sector participation in small towns. Although these reforms have attracted significant international attention, 38% of the population still had no access to an improved water source in 2010. Concerning access to improved sanitation, figures have varied widely. According to government figures, it was 70% in rural areas and 81% in urban areas in 2011, while according to UN figures it was only 34%. The water and sanitation sector was recognized as a key area under the 2004 Poverty Eradication Action Plan (PEAP), Uganda's main strategy paper to fight poverty. According to a 2006 published report, a comprehensive expenditure framework had been introduced to coordinate financial support by external donors, the national government, and non-governmental organizations. The PEAP estimated that from 2001 to 2015, about US$1.4 billion, or US$92 million per year, was needed to increase water supply coverage up to 95%, with rural areas needing US$956 million, urban areas and large towns needing US$281 million, and small towns needing US$136 million. Education At the 2002 census, Uganda had a literacy rate of 66.8% 76.8% male and 57.7% female. 
Public spending on education was at 5.2% of the 2002–2005 GDP. Health Uganda has been among the rare HIV success stories. Infection rates of 30% of the population in the 1980s fell to 6.4% by the end of 2008. However, there has been a spike in recent years compared to the mid-1990s. Meanwhile, the practice of abstinence was found to have decreased. The prevalence of female genital mutilation (FGM) is low, according to a 2013 UNICEF report. Only 1% of women in Uganda have undergone FGM, with the practice being illegal in the country. Life expectancy at birth was estimated to be 53.45 years in 2012. The infant mortality rate was approximately 61 deaths per 1,000 children in 2012. There were eight physicians per 100,000 persons in the early 2000s. The 2006 Uganda Demographic Health Survey UDHS indicated that roughly 6,000 women die each year from pregnancy-related complications. However, recent pilot studies by Future Health Systems have shown that this rate could be significantly reduced by implementing a voucher scheme for health services and transport to clinics. Uganda's elimination of user fees at state health facilities in 2001 has resulted in an 80% increase in visits, with over half of this increase coming from the poorest 20% of the population. This policy has been cited as a key factor in helping Uganda achieve its Millennium Development Goals and as an example of the importance of equity in achieving those goals. Despite this policy, many users are denied care if they do not provide their own medical equipment, as happened in the highly publicized case of Jennifer Anguko. Poor communication within hospitals, low satisfaction with health services and distance to health service providers undermine the provision of quality health care to people living in Uganda, and particularly for those in poor and elderly headed households. The provision of subsidies for poor and rural populations, along with the extension of public-private partnerships, have been identified as important provisions to enable vulnerable populations to access health services. In July 2012, there was an Ebola outbreak in the Kibale district of the country. On the 4th of October 2012, the Ministry of Health officially declared the end of the outbreak after at least 16 people had died. The Health Ministry announced on the 16th of August 2013 that three people had died in northern Uganda from a suspected outbreak of Congo crimean hemorrhagic fever. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Crime and law enforcement. In Uganda, the Allied Democratic Forces is considered a violent rebel force that opposes the Ugandan government. These rebels are an enemy of the Uganda People's Defense Force and are considered an affiliate of Al-Shabaab. <laughs> Science and technology The National Science, Technology and Innovation Policy dates from 2009. Its overarching goal is to strengthen national capability to generate, transfer and apply scientific knowledge, skills and technologies that ensure sustainable utilization of natural resources for the realization of Uganda's development objectives. The policy precedes Uganda Vision 2040, which was launched in April 2013 to transform Ugandan society from a peasant to a modern and prosperous country within 30 years, in the words of the cabinet. Uganda Vision 2040 vows to strengthen the private sector, improve education and training, modernize infrastructure and the underdeveloped services and agriculture sectors, foster industrialization and promote good governance, among other goals. Potential areas for economic development include oil and gas, tourism, minerals and information and communication technologies ICTs. .Research funding climbed between 2008 and 2010 from 0.33% to 0.48% of GDP. Over the same period, the number of researchers doubled in head counts from 1,387 to 2,823, according to the UNESCO Institute for Statistics. This represents a leap from 44 to 83 researchers per million inhabitants over the same period. One in four researchers is a woman. Uganda has been able to manufacture prototype of cars called Kira in which the government invested 70 USD. <laughs> Demographics The country has a significant overpopulation problem. 
Uganda's population grew from 9.5 million people in 1969 to 34.9 million in 2014. With respect to the last intercensal period September 2002, the population increased by 10.6 million people in the past 12 years. Uganda's median age of 15 years is the lowest in the world. Uganda has the fifth highest total fertility rate in the world, at 5.97 children born per woman 2014 estimates. There were about 80,000 Indians in Uganda before Idi Amin required the expulsion of Ugandan Asians mostly of Indian origin in 1972, which reduced the population to as low as 7,000. Many Indians, however, returned to Uganda after Amin's fall ouster in 1979. Around 90% of Ugandan Indians reside in Kampala. According to the UNHCR, Uganda hosts over 1.1 million refugees on its soil as of November 2018. Most come from neighboring countries in the African Great Lakes region, particularly South Sudan and Democratic Republic of the Congo. Languages <inaudible> 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 Swahili, a widely used language throughout the African Great Lakes region, was approved as the country's second official national language in 2005. English was the only official language until the constitution was amended in 2005. Although Swahili has not been favored by the Bantu-speaking populations of the south and southwest of the country, it is an important lingua franca in the northern regions. It is also widely used in the police and military forces, which may be a historical result of the disproportionate recruitment of northerners into the security forces during the colonial period. The status of Swahili has thus alternated with the political group in power. For example, Idi Amin, who came from the northwest, declared Swahili to be the national language. Topic: Religion. According to the 2014 census, Christians made up about 85% of Uganda's population, with Muslims making up nearly 14%. The Roman Catholic Church had the largest number of adherents, 39.3%, down from 41.6 in 2002, followed by the Anglican Church of Uganda, 32%, down from 35.9%. The category of evangelical, Pentecostal, born again showed the most growth, rising from 4.7% in 2002 to 11.1% in 2018. Adventist and other Protestant churches claimed most of the remaining Christians, although there was also a small Eastern Orthodox community. The next most reported religion of Uganda was Islam, with Muslims representing 13.7% of the population, up from 12.1% in 2002. The Muslim population is primarily Sunni. There are also minorities who are Shia, 7%, Ahmadiyya, 4%, and those that are non denominational Muslims, Sufi Muslims. The remainder of the population, according to the 2014 census, followed traditional religions, 0.1%, down from 1% in 2002. Other religions, 1.4%, or had no religious affiliation, 0.2%. The northern region, including the West Nile sub region, is predominantly Catholic, while the Iganga district in eastern Uganda has the highest percentage of Muslims. The rest of the country has a mix of religious affiliations. <inaudible> <inaudible> largest cities <inaudible> Culture Owing to the large number of communities, culture within Uganda is diverse. Many Asians mostly from India who were expelled during the regime of Idi Amin have returned to Uganda. Topic: Sport. Topic: Basketball. The country has an increasingly successful national basketball team. It is nicknamed the Silverbacks and made its debut at the 2015 FIBA Africa Championship. Baseball 
In July 2011 Kampala, Uganda qualified for the 2011 Little League World Series in Williamsport, Pennsylvania for the first time, beating Saudi Arabian baseball team Dharan LL, although visa complications prevented them from attending the series. Little League teams from Uganda qualified for and attended the 2012 Little League World Series. Media. Cinema The Ugandan film industry is relatively young. It is developing quickly, but still faces an assortment of challenges. There has been support for the industry as seen in the proliferation of film festivals such as Amakula, Pearl International Film Festival, Maisha African Film Festival and Manya Human Rights Festival. However filmmakers struggle against the competing markets from other countries on the continent such as those in Nigeria and South Africa in addition to the big budget films from Hollywood. The first publicly recognized film that was produced solely by Ugandans was Feeling Struggle, which was directed and written by Haji Ashraf Sisemwajiriri in 2005. This marks the year of ascent of film in Uganda, a time where many enthusiasts were proud to classify themselves as cinematographers in varied capacities. The local film industry is polarized between two types of filmmakers. The first are filmmakers who use the Nollywood video film era's guerrilla approach to filmmaking, churning out a picture in around two weeks and screening it in makeshift video halls. The second is the filmmaker who has the film aesthetic, but with limited funds has to depend on the competitive scramble for donor cash. Though cinema in Uganda is evolving it still faces major challenges. Along with technical problems such as refining acting and editing skills, there are issues regarding funding and lack of government support and investment. There are no schools in the country dedicated to film, banks do not extend credit to film ventures, and distribution and marketing of movies remains poor. The Uganda Communications Commission (UCC) is preparing regulations starting in 2014 that require Ugandan television to broadcast 70% Ugandan content and of this 40% to be independent productions. With the emphasis on Ugandan film and the UCC regulations favoring Ugandan productions for mainstream television, Ugandan film may become more prominent and successful in the near future. See also Index of Uganda-related articles Outline of Uganda <laughs>